All right, welcome to this little tutorial on how to make a snowflake in Onshape. So I'm going to start by making a new document and calling it Snowflake. And I'm going to make a new sketch on my top plane. So for this tutorial, please do follow the planes that I use. I'm gonna click on the top plane, click my pencil to start my sketch. I'll click the pencil again to hide the menu. I now wanna be looking straight down on my top plane. There's two ways to do that. You can either tap the iPad screen with two fingers and choose view normal to sketch plane on the bottom. Otherwise I can click on the view cube in the right, on the upper right and just choose top. I then like to click on the sort of lock rotation button. So it just turns orange and this prevents you from rotating your sketch. I personally then like to hide all of the the extra planes, so I'm going to click on the eyes so I just see my sketch in the origin. Now, when it comes to designing a snowflake, the great thing is that all of them are different, so you really can't go wrong. I do recommend that you sort of look at snowflake clip art on maybe Google Images to get an idea, but the way we do this in Onshape is we're going to design one half of one sort of spike of the snowflake, and the origin is going to be sort of like our middle um, point. So I'm going to click on the pencil and choose the line tool. Zoom in just a little bit here. Now, when I start this, I wanna be a little bit to the right of the origin. I don't wanna be directly on the origin. So somewhere right about here is good. I'll then draw a line going up. I have a line going out like this. And I'm just gonna draw sort of a very basic, you know, snowflake design. And my recommendation is you do want to start maybe sort of basic the first time. Get something that's going to work. I'll do a bigger one. And then you can always go back. And since this does parametric design, you can always go back and change things and make it as cool as you want. All right. Go up like this. And I'll go over. Now, when I go over, see this little dotted line? That means it's going to be vertical to the origin. That's what I want. So let go there. I'm then going to drag down. And I'll finish my sketch over there. All right? And you know that's a closed shape when it turns gray. So it gets all shaded on you. Now, it would be a great idea for you to add some dimensions to this. So I'm just going to add a quick dimension. And I'm going to make this, I'll make mine 50 millimeters. Doesn't really matter how big you make it unless you want to, you know, 3D print or laser cut it later on. If I zoom in, I'm also going to do a few other things here. So I want some lines to be parallel. So I'm going to go to my parallel constraint. Boom, boom. Right, so those four, and again, I'm going to go to parallel. Nice. And then I would also like these two lines to both be vertical, just in case they weren't already. All right, excellent. So the next part, so again, this is like one, this is like the right side of my little snowflake spike. I now need to click my pencil. I'm going to choose the mirror tool. So it's like near the bottom left in the third row from the bottom. And it's asking me to select a mirror line. I'm going to select that line on the left. So that's where I'm going to mirror it. I now need to select the entities that I want to mirror. So on a computer, you just select all of it. It's, it's easier on an iPad, you have to click on every little line. And as you click on the lines, you'll notice they appear on the other side of your mirror line. So it only takes about, you know, 10 seconds. It's not a big deal. Excellent. And now both sides should be shaded. So now we know we're good to go. And I'm going to look at this. And if I wanted to, if I, you know, if maybe I think this is like too wide. I could always, you know, maybe click on my bottom point. And I could maybe make this thinner. Um, I can make it thicker, so you can sort of modify it a little bit as well. You can add some more constraints, whatever you, you know, whatever works for your design. 
I'm happy with this. I'm going to click the check mark to end my sketch. I now need to extrude this design. So I'm going to click on that little uh, circle icon to the right of the pencil and I'm choosing the first one, extrude. So it's asking me to select some entities. I'm gonna click on both sides. And right now the depth is 25 millimeters. That's a bit excessive for a snowflake. So I'm gonna change that down to three. There we go, much thinner. That's looking great. I'll click my check mark to end my extrusion. Now, make sure again we're looking top, top down. We now need to make a new sketch. So click the pencil. Only this time you wanna choose the front plane. So I'm gonna click on the front plane of my little menu on the left. Even though I've, I've hidden it, I can still click on front. And notice now my sketch two says front plane. I now need to do my finger tap and view normal to the sketch plane. I could also click on my cube and choose the front as well. All right, either way you do it, um, we're going to be choosing the line tool. And we're just gonna draw one line. It's going to be vertical going through the origin. Just like that. That's all you need to do. And you'll notice that it's sort of going from the front to the back of your snowflake design. And this is going to be the line that we use to do with the next part, which is going to be completing our snowflake. So I'm going to hit the check mark to finish my sketch. Now comes the cool part. We're going to click on that circle icon again. And this time we're going to choose the circular pattern. It's the third row from the top uh, next to the linear pattern. So looking at this menu, it's saying that we want to do a part pattern, feature, or face. We want to do a part pattern. So we're going to leave that alone. As far as the um, operation type, we're going to change it from new to add. So basically we're gonna make one piece, so one solid snowflake. We don't want each uh, you know, little spine to be a separate piece. Now it's asking me entities to pattern. I can just click on it and it's going to select that. I then need to click on axis of pattern. And this is where I'm now going to click on that little line that I made on my front plane. All right, so here we go. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. So notice it made four uh, if you look at the menu there, instance count has four. So there's four of them by default. You can change this. So right now, those four things aren't even touching. So let's change it to five, see how it looks. Not bad, not bad. Let's try six. Looking better. Let's try seven. All right, very cool. Notice though, uh, my pieces aren't actually touching, which means that when I did my sketch, I actually started sort of too high from the top. So as of right now, if you look in the bottom left, I have like seven different parts. So we need to fix this. So I'm gonna click the check mark. I'm gonna end my circular pattern. I'm now gonna go back and edit my sketch. So click on it and choose edit. And what I now need to do is I need to do something at the bottom to make it wider so it's going to connect with other, the other parts. So I go back to my line tool and let's see, maybe I'll do something like this. Do, 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 do. I'll try one of those, let's see how that looks. So now I'm going to, again, click my pencil, go back to the mirror, choose my mirror line, and now click on these three. I'll then click the check mark to update my sketch. Now I may need to go back to extrude and edit this and make sure these two pieces are extruded. And once I hit the check mark, it's now going to update the final design. There we go. Look at that. So now everything is connected. So now this is one solid piece. I can go back and edit my pattern again. Let's try going back to six, see how that looks. That's cool. Let's try five. Ooh, I like that as well. Let's try eight. Even cooler, all right? So no matter what you do, I'll go with five. No matter what you do, it's all gonna be sort of slightly different, all right? So now again, 
here's my snowflake. And again, I can go back to my sketch and edit that. And this is going to update my snowflake. Let's imagine, for example, I want the ends of these to be sort of little spikes. I can do that. So I'll go back and edit my sketch. Come up to the top. Go back to my line tool. And I'll start here. Go up to there. And then let's go back to the other side. Nice and easy. Hit the check mark. Go back to my extrude and just make sure that that part is clicked. And now notice on my snowflake, all the little lines are pointed edges. All right. So you can go on and on. You can modify this as many times as you want. And again, due to the fact that it's parametric design, that snowflake is going to just automatically update every time you adjust the sketch. All right. I hope you like this. Enjoy. Uh, and again, feel free to be as creative as you want. Thanks for watching.